Petteri Kaukila, Juha Ojanperä and, and Timo Sorilen from Valmet uh, Technologies and then my colleague from my own research group, Timo Saksala. So, okay, this is the outline first for the introduction and then this program formulation of our Greek uh, damage model and then, oh sorry, then I would like to specify it more uh, clearly what we have been doing. Then I review this normal grant parameter which is used in, in, in this model and then I show some uh, parameters which have been estimated based on the manufacturer's data for the T24 material and finally final tournament analysis we have implemented it in analysis as a user match subroutine and some concluding remarks. Okay well actually I can skip this one because it is clearly said in the second talk that uh, the flexibility is, is the keyword nowadays. Okay, first then to this thermodynamic formulation. Well, I am very much in love with this French school of, of continuum mechanics, so, so I would like to, to, to just to derive this positive <coughs> model based on these two potential functions. That the reversible behavior is, is described by the Helmholtz free energy, uh, which now depends on, on, on three uh, state variables, the temperature T and the thermoelastic strain epsilon here and, and the integrity omega. The integrity is, is just as it, as, it, as it is introduced by Kashano in, in the 50s and so, so it is 1 minus damage which is usually nowadays. The damage variable D is usually very much used nowadays but I, I like this uh, integrity because it makes these uh, expressions a little bit more simpler. And we, we assume also linear kinematics, so, so we, can, we can additively decompose uh, the strain and the strain rate, the elastic creep and thermal components. And then, of course, the dissipative uh, processes are described by the complementary dissipation potential, which, which depends on, 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 on the uh, thermodynamic forces, y, q, and, and, and sigma. Why is this uh, thermodynamic force uh, related to this uh, damage evolution? And, and Q is the heat flux, and sigma is, of course, the stress. And then T and omega can uh, uh, act here as, as a parameters. And the dissipation potential is, is uh, defined in a way that uh, this uh, uh, dissipation power can be expressed by this kind of, 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 of expression. So it means that uh, if, for instance, if the dissipation potential with respect to these uh, the, uh, thermodynamic forces is constant, it automatically uh, satisfies this uh, dissipation inequality. Actually, convexity is, is not uh, required. Only what is required is that uh, this dissipation uh, uh, potential is, is, is monotonous with respect to these uh, thermodynamic forces. Okay, together with this uh, closest to them inequality, we can, we can, by the standard Coleman null procedure, obtain these uh, positive equations. Uh, S is, of course, the specific entropy and sigma stress, and this is the creep uh, strain rate, which is equals to this uh, uh, gradient of, of, of stress gradient of participation potential, and then this uh, uh, integrity rate, of course, which is uh, derivative of, of, of the dissipation potential with respect to the ther thermodynamic force and of course this considers about the uh, heat, uh, uh, heat, heat uh, transfer by conduction. Okay, now I will specify, specify the model. We have just chosen this kind of realm of free energy and then uh, the first part, of course, uh, is related to this uh, heat conduction part, and the second part is, of course, this elastic uh, damaging mat material. And then the dissipation potential we have we have uh, additively decomposed it into three parts: the thermal part, and then and, and this uh, damage part, and then this creep part here. Uh, so, so there's the sigma is, is the thermodynamic force, and y is the thermodynamic force here also in the uh, damage potential. And then for, this is the classical thermal part, of course, 
this gives, uh, if it, for instance, these uh, thermal conductivities are uh, constant, it gives the classical cooling. Uh, <coughs> for, for this Greek potential, we have chosen this uh, uh, Norton type uh, potential function, and, and I should mention that uh, this is the Arrhenius type of, of, of temperature function here, and then P is a power here, is dependent on temperature. And uh, this uh, time constant here is, is this T sub C. Uh, and uh, this, this is, of course, related to this relaxation uh, time. And this uh, reference, reference rest, rest or, or the drag stress, uh, we actually have been chosen now simply this uh, yield stress, which, of course, depends on, 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 on this uh, uh, temperature. But we have not considered here for simplicity this hardening effect. Of course, in including this hardening effect, we could uh, model, for instance, the primary phase of, of the grid very well. Also, for instance, sorry, also including here the back stress in, in, in this effective stress, we can also model different kind of, 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 of uh, phenom uh, fatigue phenomena more, more accurately, but for, for this simple model, we have not we have just used this uh, classical uh, J2 uh, effective stress. Okay, for damage potential, we have we have just tried two two different uh, potentials. This is the Kassan of Rapotnov type, sorry, and and uh, again here this exponent here depends on on temperature can depend on te temperature. In the first model. <coughs> We have the similar kind of, 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 let's say, damage activation energy term here. And then this is damage, uh, some kind of characteristic damage time here. But in the second model, we have actually applied this non grant relationship. And then we have, we have a model which uh, fulfills this non grant relationship exactly. And I will, I will, I will show in the next slide that of course you all know that the Mokman grant parameter says that uh, this minimum creep, creep rain, uh, the, the product of, of the minimum creep strain rate uh, times the eruption time equals something like constant. And then uh, we actually can derive very easily in, in, a, in a creep test uh, this kind of Mokman, sorry, Mokman grant uh, relationship for these two models. And for the first model, it is like that one. And then for the second model, simply only the ratio of, 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 of these uh, characteristic times of, of the grip and damage behavior. And actually, the model two can be obtained from the model one by imposing the, this kind of, of uh, uh, constraints. Well. these parameters uh, uh, to this T24 steel and then we assume a linear dependency of, 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 of these exponents P and R and also linear uh, dependency of, of the yield stress on, on temperature and we obtain this kind of, of material parameters and uh, for instance these dots there they are the manufacturer's data and then these are our, our, our let's say, uh, calibration results. And uh, <coughs> this is about 500 centigrade, 550 and 600. So we can see that the, between 600, there is not so good uh, correspondence uh, with uh, the uh, manufacturer's data. But I, I should mention that, for instance, for this P91 steel, these uh, dots lie almost like in, 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 a, in, a, in a straight line, so this kind of linear dependency can, can very easily model this P91 steel. Okay, a little bit about this Monkman grant parameter. A material scientist usually likes to use this log log plot, and everything fits very well in, in a relationship because in, in a logarithmic scale you can have a huge variations and still it fits very, very nicely with, with, uh, with the data. And for instance, I have plotted here about the results of, of these two models. Uh, 
if you look to the right hand side here, this is the model two, which uh, fulfills uh, exactly the Mokman Grant relationship. So, so it is independent of, of, of temperature and stress. But here, the dots, there are actually these uh, uh, predictions of, of the model one, which also fits rather rather nicely with the Mokman Grant uh, relationship. If you if you are looking in the log log scale, what you can in many 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 papers find this kind of uh, plots uh, with experimental results which are roughly about the same. But if you look it in, in a linear scale, you can you can see quite quite a big uh, changes. This straight line here is the model one which fulfills the mock grant relationship exactly and, and, and these these uh, uh, curved lines are, are by the model one with, with three different uh, stress states. So you can see that in, in that case there is a difference uh, uh, by the factor of, of two. Okay, and finally we have implemented it in, in, in this uh, ANSYS uh, finite element code as a user match subroutine and just a simple test case so for heater and a nozzle here connection and then and, and we have used this kind of ramp uh, displacements and, and, and uh, temperature changes like you can, you can see here, here in, in, in this figure. And the results are such that uh, for, for instance here you can see the damage, uh, uh, let's say the most uh, severe part which is here near, near the weld, of course as you should expect. And here is this damage evolution with these two models. We can see that the model two a little bit under predicts uh, with respect to the model one the one this damage evolution here. Okay, well, about concluding remarks, well, we have developed a thermodynamically consistent model for creep and the high temperature creep fatigue analysis, which we, where we use this Norton Bailey type, type uh, creep potential and Rasano Rapotno type damage potential. And then two versions of the damage potentials uh, have, been, have been developed. The one, one that uh, satisfies with exactly this Mach 1 graph uh, hypothesis. And well, and material parameters for, for T24 still have been estimated in the temperature range of 500 to 620 degrees. And we just implemented it as a diffusion mark subroutine to our Okay, thank you very much for your kind attention.